There's a few brand new gaming news stories that just dropped today that we got to talk about, starting with Death's Door being available for download on the eShop today. And I think Zelda fans out there may want to pay attention to this game's release. Then I also want to share with you guys a very interesting glitch that's been uncovered in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And I'm pretty confident that this will not be around for long before it is patched, but I do want to go over it here today on the channel. And the big talking point for today's video is the fact that Harmonix has now been acquired by Epic Games. And I want to talk through what this could mean for the future of some Nintendo Switch titles. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Summer Nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we're covering a few different stories today, and I want to kick it off with Death Store being available on the eShop right now. And this is claimed to be a very heavily Zelda and Dark Souls style influenced game. And if you know anything about me and you've been around on the channel for a while, you will know that Zelda and Dark Souls are like my two favorite all time series. And and I just think that the gameplay for this game looks really incredible. It's definitely fast paced. It's definitely intense. And I think that this is one that I'll be very excited to actually check out. Now it is at a $20 price point right now available on the eShop for download. This game was originally out on Microsoft consoles, but was exclusive to that. And as of today, it is now available on, of course, Nintendo Switch, and then even your PS4 and PS5 through the PS Store, you can actually download this as well. And I want to quickly read through the description that's actually on the Nintendo eShop page to kind of give you guys a little bit of a heads up of what this game is going for and just a brief overview of what to expect. Reaping souls of the dead and punching the clock might get monotonous, but it's honest work for a crow. The job gets lively when your assigned soul is stolen and you must track down a desperate thief to a realm untouched by death, where creatures grow far past their expiry and overflow with greed and power. Talent sharp combat, utilize melee weapons, arrows, and magic to overcome a fantastic array of beasts and demigods. Mistakes are punished and victory is rewarded. Gain an edge by customizing your character stats and mastering the abilities and upgrades you obtain. A beautifully bleak world, venture beyond the doors and explore a land full of twisted inhabitants and countless secrets, bringing hope to the weird and wonderful characters you'll meet along the way. A dark mystery to unravel, track down and defeat colossal tyrants with stories and motivations of their own. Experience a somber yet darkly comedic tale, uncovering the truths behind the flow of souls and the role of the crows and the origin of the doors. So with all things considered and what I've seen from the gameplay trailer so far and the new launch trailer that just went up today that I will have linked in the description down below, I will definitely say that for $20, this sounds worth it for me to go ahead and pick it up and check it out. And I will be most excited to really check out the mechanics of the combat as if that is tight and responsive and very engaging. I am certain that I will enjoy this game, especially if there's some puzzle elements in there like you would expect from Legend of Zelda style dungeons and then some fast dodge roll style combat like what you would get with the Souls series. So I personally Personally, I'm very excited to check this out. I would be curious from you guys if you think that this is a game you would enjoy and if it's worth you checking it out at the $20 price point on the Nintendo eShop. So please share all your thoughts and opinions on all things Death Store in the comments down below. Now, the next story we're talking about today is actually a very interesting glitch that's been uncovered in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And this is actually around the ability to clone your Pokemon with an item as well. So you can actually clone items and Pokemon in this game now, apparently. And, you know, I'm personally actually really enjoying my playthrough so far. I just made it past the third gym. And if you guys have been around on the channel for a while, you will know that I don't play very many handheld games. And I did skip over a lot of the best Pokemon installments on the DS when I didn't have the option to plug, plug them into something like a Game Boy player, which I use to primarily play through most of the Game Boy handheld titles, I would play them on the TV still through something like the Game Boy player. Well, you couldn't do that with the DS, and I never finished Pokemon Diamond, which I do own on the original Nintendo DS version, and these are fan favorites, and I definitely see why. Now, I know the art style gets a lot of people talking online, and I'm not really that impressed by it as far as the overworld. Like, it's definitely not the art style I typically would prefer, but the gameplay is absolutely there, and it's so enjoyable that I don't even really think about it. Not to mention the fact that when you go to the battle screens, it looks very similar to what you'd expect from Sword and Shield and not that kind of Funko Pop overworld style that's kind of happening when you're walking around in the overworld itself. But I want to start off this conversation by quickly hopping over to Nintendo Everything where they detail the glitch itself. And I will tell you guys, if you want to utilize this, which I'm not either for it or against it, like I don't care, you do what you want to do with your game. But I do think that this is going to be taken down relatively soon. So let's quickly hop over to Nintendo Everything to read through the article together. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Clone Glitch Discovered 
Just a few days following the launch of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, players have uncovered an interesting new clone glitch. Not only does it work for duplicating Pokemon, but items as well. Twitter user Kevin for 5 seems to have made the discovery or at least one of the first to make it widely known. YouTuber Okastra then published a video explaining the glitch which actually doesn't take much effort at all. Follow these steps to take advantage of the clone glitch in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Put two Pokemon that are in the same position in different boxes like the bottom right corner. Take one of these Pokemon and put them in the battle box. Go to the Solisan Daycare and talk to the women and choose the Pokemon from the other box. Before closing out, click the box list in the bottom left. Press Y and swap slots they're placed in and deposit your Pokemon. Reopen your box and go to the battle box. Take the Pokemon you're going to delete and insert it. Take the Pokemon you want to clone and add it to the list. View the summary screen of the Pokemon you just added when it came back out, it'll be cloned. Outside of the steps above, there isn't much else players need to do for the Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl clone glitch. Just make sure you've reached Solaceon. This happens early on. You basically only need to complete the second gym. Both Switch titles have already received a couple of updates around launch. It'll be interesting to see if and when a patch is released to eliminate this new cloning glitch. So I personally think this is actually a pretty big deal if you really stop and think about it. As of right now, you can get a super rare shiny Pokemon, make it hold a rare item, and then actually clone it. And of course, you have to think about the implications of the online trading system that works in this game. Like, it'll be very interesting to see if, you know, Game Freak or Pokemon Company, rather, can get a hold of this very quickly and do, a, like, a forced update. But I don't think that you would have to update your game. I mean, you never typically have to. Now it's already in a playable state. So if people just choose not to update this, I'm sure they will have their fun with this exploit before it actually does get patched out. But I would love to hear from you guys on all of your Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl experiences thus far. And if you're enjoying this installment in the game, what do you think about the Grand Underground? Because that's actually quite a bit bigger than I realized from the overview trailer. And I'm definitely having some fun going through that. And I'm definitely looking forward to the shiny hunting aspect as well once I'm past the Elite Four and I get into the post-game content and things like that. But I would love to hear from you guys on your experiences so far. So please share all your thoughts and opinions on all things Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl in the comments down below. Now, the last story that I want to share with you all today is actually one that is personally very interesting to me. As I grew up as a huge guitar hero and rock band fan, they like came out at the perfect time. I was probably 13 or 14 years old when I got really into them. And it's also crazy to think that that's like 15 years ago now since these games were really in their prime. And you may not have heard of a developer by the name of Harmonix as once upon a time they were super popular and in the mainstream. And here recently, we haven't really seen them doing very much. And the reason they are in the news today is because they have been officially acquired by Epic Games. Now, they are going to help out with some Fortnite development from the sounds of it, but that's not really what I'm interested in at all. I am hopeful that maybe we could see a round two of these rhythm guitar-based or band-based games actually make a return, such as a Rock Band 5 on the current gen platforms. Like, I'm going to get a little bit hopeful with this one, but to start off the conversation, I do want to first read through the VGC article that basically breaks down what the acquisition means for the future of Harmonix. Epic Games has acquired Rock Band and Dance Central creator Harmonix. It will collaborate with Epic to develop musical journeys and gameplay for Fortnite. The Boston, Massachusetts-based studio, which was founded in 1995 and was also once owned by Viacom, said on Tuesday that it plans to work with Epic to create musical journeys and gameplay for Fortnite. It also said it will continue to support existing titles including Rock Band 4 and Fuser, and that all its games will remain available on Steam and consoles. Harmonix has a track record of creating fun and engaging music experiences designed for everyone to enjoy. Epic said, as we work to build the metaverse, this expertise is needed to reimagine how music is experienced, created, and distributed. Studio co-founder said, Harmonix has always aspired to create the world's most beloved interactive music experiences, and by joining with Epic, we will be able to do this at scale. Together, we will push the creative boundaries of what's possible and invent new ways for our players to make, perform, and share music. Alan Taskin, Epic's vice president of game development, also commented, music is already bringing millions of people together in Fortnite from our emotes to global concerts and events. Together with Harmonix team, we will transform how players experience music going from passive listeners to active participants. So while I really couldn't care less about the Fortnite collaboration stuff, I do think it's exciting to hear them be focused on music-based experiences as we walk forward into the future, as I really think it was an unfortunate thing that happened with the Guitar Hero and Rock Band franchise, as it was just super popular out of nowhere. It was a smash hit, and then they essentially milked the cow by actually releasing multiple variations of Guitar Hero every single year and multiple versions of Rock Band every single year. Like, that's essentially what killed those games, in my opinion, as it was just 
too much too fast and people essentially just lost interest in what they were doing whereas if you would have had you know two to three years apart from each release and there was really ongoing support for the games and not just quick cash grabs for like a new band collaboration which by the way guitar hero metallica is like still to this day one of my favorite games to actually play through you can literally go through and play metallica's experience as an entire band team working together and there's expert plus drums which if you guys don't know like i'm a ridiculously huge drumming fan and i do enjoy playing drums myself and expert plus actually legitimately makes you play the track almost as if you were playing the song in real life so it's pretty crazy it's actually what really got me into a lot of the bands that i now listen to today and you know i just have a ton of nostalgia and love for this series so i hope that maybe rock band 5 will be supported on something like the ps5 series x and even the switch as of course the we did get these titles as you know nintendo has a large chunk of the audience and i do think that if we see them go in this direction that hopefully the switch would get some love as well with these games and we would all be able to maybe enjoy these music games again for a future generation that is now probably missed out on the fact that these used to be super popular and when i say super popular like i legitimately mean if there was people that were good playing guitar hero at best buy like my friend and myself not trying to brag or anything but we were both playing on expert co-op and people would actually gather behind us and watch us play at best buy on the tv screen like it was the coolest thing ever for a while and then it just again unfortunately died off very fast for oversaturation and i think it's been enough time now that maybe we can give it a second shot there was this ridiculous guitar hero attempt somewhat recently that was guitar hero live and they actually changed the button layout from five to six but it was like three on top and three on bottom i don't know why they would change the button layout like they definitely were just running out of ideas but there hasn't been a proper installment in this series since i think it was like warriors of rock was the last guitar hero game that came out in 2010 or something like that and then of course rock band 4 is the more recent release at 2015 but that's still talking like almost seven years ago that that game actually came out and i do think that you know it's only playable on the previous platform so maybe it's time to give this genre a shot at coming back if done right or i could be totally wrong and they don't have any plans for any kind of rock band experience but they're gonna do something similar like to what beat saber is and vr is obviously you know there's gonna be a lot of vr experiences out there that are music and rhythm based in the future as i think beat saber is a super fun enjoyable game as well but it just doesn't have that same factor that guitar hero did for me personally but i want to pose the question to you guys at this point in the video on you know if you have any nostalgia for these music rhythm games such as guitar hero or rock band over the course of time and if you enjoyed them playing them growing up like i did and then also just share with me all your thoughts and opinions on all the different stories we talked about today including if you're interested in picking up death's door and then what you think about pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl so far so i do look forward to hearing from you guys in the comments down below as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics thanks so much for watching the video today everyone i do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end i do at this point in the video would invite you all one more time to join sunburn nation if you haven't done so already do so by subscribing below hit the like button on your way out if you enjoyed it today and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news that's gonna do it for me guys i hope you all have a great day sunburn nation out